So my name is Thibaut de Nolin. I work at uh, the CMS CNRS uh, laboratory in Toulouse, France. And uh, this presentation is about uh, strain analysis of uh, PZT thin film using um, aberration corrected uh, high resolution transmission electron microscopy and uh, dark field electron holography. So this work is part of the European project NanoStrain which is uh, dedicated to the investigation of piezoelectric materials at uh, the nanoscale. So the main motivation for this project is a new type of transistor which is currently developed by IBM and it is called a uh, piezoelectronic transistor. So in this device there are two main uh, materials, a piezoelectric and a piezoresistive and are placed between three uh, electrodes. So when a voltage is applied to uh, the gate at the bottom, the piezoelectric material expands, it applies uh, a pressure to the piezoresistive, and due to the, due to the pressure, the, the piezoresistive undergoes a transition from an insulator to a mental state, and this creates a conductive path between the sense and the common electrode. So the device is turned on. The materials that are considered for this application are um, chalcogenides, such as samarium selenide for the piezoresistive, and PZT or PMNPT for the piezoelectric materials. The advantage of this structure is that first, um, the power consumption is quite low, and it works relatively fast compared to um, standard MOSFET, MOSFET devices. So this is why we need to uh, measure strain at the nanoscale uh, in PZT and piezoelectric materials. So I'm going to give a quick introduction to strain measurement by transmission electron microscopy. I will describe uh, the techniques and the microscopes we use, and then I will show some results obtained on an epitaxial PZT thin film. So at CMS we use mainly uh, two techniques for strain measurement. The first one is called uh, geometrical phase analysis. And the principle is first to uh, acquire a, a high resolution image that shows the, um, the latter structure of the crystal. So here it's an example of a silicon germanium layer grown on a silicon substrate. And then we calculate the Fourier transform of, of this image so the Fourier transform contains uh, several spots and each spot corresponds to um, a different set of lattice planes. And we apply a mask to uh, a single spot. And then by performing an inverse Fourier transform, we can isolate the, the signal corresponding to uh, the set of lattice planes. And we can separate the, the phase of this signal. And the phase is related to the displacement of the atoms so it can be used to calculate uh, a map of the strain. And the strain that we calculate is um, defined relatively to the substrate. So here, for example, the strain is positive in the silicon germanium layer, which is because the silicon germanium is uh, the lattice parameter of the silicon germanium is larger than the lattice parameter of, of the silicon. The second technique we use is called uh, dark field electron holography. So here the principle is first to orientate the sample into a um, diffraction condition and then we use uh, an electron biprism which is a small wire, a uh, conductive wire, placed below the specimen and by applying a, a voltage to this wire we can uh, interfere the electrons that are diffracted by uh, the substrate with the electrons that are diffracted by uh, the layer and this creates uh, a fringe pattern that can be seen as, um, as a magnified representation of the lattice planes. And again, by using a reconstruction process in Fourier space, we can calculate a map uh, of the strain in the sample. So to do this, we use two uh, microscopes. The first one is a FEI Techni machine. It has a short key field emission gun, an image corrector, and a single electron biprism. And the second one is a Itachi HF3300 that we call HITATAM. It was installed in 2012. It has a cold field emission gun, a double stage, uh, an image corrector, a B core, and three uh, biprisms after the specimen. 
So in this presentation, holography was carried out using the, the Lorentz stage, which is above the objective lens in order to have a large field of view, and using two uh, biprisms in order to uh, remove the frenal fringes and have a better control of the hologram winds and, and the fringe spacing. So the samples that we investigated is a 100 nanometer thick PZT layer grown by Ectaxi on a STO substrate. It was prepared by a focused ion beam. Uh, the PT layer I, I used just for uh, the protection of, of the surface. And this is a diagram showing the lattice parameter of the PZT as a function of the titanium content. So in this case, the titanium content is 80%, which means that um, the lattice structure of, of the layer should be uh, tetragonal. And the difference between the A and C parameter should be about 5%. And if we compare with the lattice parameter of the STO, the substrate, which is uh, cubic, then the A parameter of the PZT should be about 0.8% larger than the, than the parameter of the STO. And this is a selected area diffraction pattern of, of this region, which shows that um, the spots are splitted along, along the growth direction. And it means that the C parameter should be uh, mainly in the growth direction. So the main domain should be uh, C domains. So these are two uh, dark field electron holograms obtained using 110 uh, diffracted spots. So I use the 110 because they are more intense than usually we can have a better contrast, but we could use uh, several spots or different spots. So here you can see that the fringe spacing is larger in the PZT layer compared to the, the STO substrate, which is because the, the lattice parameter of the PZT is uh, larger than the parameter uh, of the STO. And here there's a rupture of the fringes which is due to um, a small A domain, and we'll see that later. And these are the phase maps uh, reconstructed by uh, Fourier processing. So you can see that it contains a, a lot of structural information. And once we have these two uh, images that corresponds to uh, two different vectors, we can combine them to uh, reconstruct the, the two-dimensional strain field. This is a map of the strain calculated in the growth direction. And here is the, the strain in the in-plane direction. And these are two profiles extracted from the maps uh, perpendicularly to, to the layer. So you can see that uh, the strain in the growth direction is about 5 to 6 percent, which corresponds to uh, the difference between the C parameter of the PZT and the parameter of the, of the STO. There's an increase of the strain uh, near the surface, which I suspect is due to uh, the implantation of gallium during the, the preparation of the sample. The in-plane strain is about uh, 1%, which corresponds to um, the difference between the A parameter of the PZT and the parameter of the STO. So it means that uh, the layer is, uh, is relaxed. And we can also calculate uh, a map of the shear strain and the rotation of the lattice. And here you can see that uh, there are some rotation loops at the interface, which are usually due to uh, dislocations. So this is why the film uh, is relaxed. And there's also a, a rotation inside the domain, a small A domain. But here the resolution is about 5 nanometers, so it's too large to uh, clearly resolve the domain. So if we want to improve the resolution, we can use um, high resolution imaging. This is a high resolution image of uh, A domain between two uh, C domains. So in the A domain, the C parameter is in the in-plane direction. And so the lattice is rotated by uh, 90 degree compared to, to the C domain. And these are two uh, strain maps calculated by uh, geometrical phase analysis. And this is the strain in the growth direction, and this is the strain in the in-plane direction. So you can see that the colors are uh, inverted between the two images, which is because the C and A parameters are uh, inverted in the A and C domains. 
and if we extract some profiles across the domain, then we can see that there is a variation of about five percent, which corresponds to the difference between the A and C uh, parameters. And just for curiosity, we can calculate um, the average of these two images that we call the mean dilatation. And here you can see that um, the value is constant in the layer, which is because um, in any region the, the average is always A plus C uh, divided by 2. This is another high resolution image showing three uh, A domains and two uh, C domains. And this is the strain calculated uh, in the growth direction. So what is interesting here is that there's a gradient that goes from the lower obtuse corner to uh, the surface and to the acute corner. So I mean that the strain is higher near the surface, near higher here, and lower in the obtuse corner. And if we extract some profiles along these arrows, then we can see that the strain varies between um, four, five percent to six, seven percent uh, near the surface. <coughs> and the reason is that um, there's a slight rotation between the C and A domains, so that they can stack um, in the optimum way. But there's also another constraint, which is due to uh, the substrate. I mean that the layer has to be uh, flattened in order to, to fit with, with the lattice uh, of the substrate. So in order to, to do this, um, this, reg this region has to be pushed down and this region has to be pushed up. So what happens is that uh, the tetragonality and the C parameters, uh, C parameter is reduced in the, in the lower obtuse corner and the C parameter is larger near the surface and larger here. So this is why there's a gradient that goes from, from this corner to the other regions. This is another high resolution image with a large field of view. So thanks to a 4K camera we can have um, a field of view of about 400 nanometers and we still have enough pixels to uh, sample the largest uh, lattice planes. So what is interesting here is that um, there are several A domains with two different uh, inclinations. So on the left part of the image, the A domains are inclined to, to the right side, and on the right part they are inclined to, to the left side. This is a map of the rotation calculated by um, geometrical phase analysis. So by convention, the rotation is um, anticlockwise positive and positive corresponds to um, the red and yellow colors. <laughs> so on the left part of the image you can see that the A domains are rotated um, anticlockwise and on the right part they are rotated clockwise. And the rotation is about 2.3 degree. Uh, the C domains are also slightly rotated in the opposite way. I mean that here it's more blue and here it's more red and the rotation is about 0 0.4 degree. If we uh, extract a profile along this line, then we can see that the rotation is uh, constant in this region, in this domain here. Then it starts to change um, linearly in this middle, middle region here. And then the rotation becomes constant again in this uh, last region here. But unfortunately, it's a bit uh, noisy. So for the next slide, I want to come back to um, dark field electron holography. So this is a dark field electron hologram obtained using uh, O2 or diffracted pots. So it gives an information about the, um, the lattice planes that are um, parallel to, to the interface. And this is Moiré image where um, the, the bending of the fringes is, is related to uh, the rotation of the lattice. And this region is particularly interesting because the rotation is symmetrical relatively to um, the mid-axis between these two uh, A domains. So there are two A domains with two different inclination and due to the rotation the middle C domain should be um, slightly lower than, than the C domain on the sides. But um, due to the, the constraint induced by the substrate, the C domain has to be uh, pushed up and the sides have to be pushed down. So what happens is um, 
is almost like a three point bending test and um, the middle part is uh, bent symmetrically relatively to, to the middle axis. So this is um, a rotation, a map of the rotation of, of the lattice planes and you can see that um, the rotation is anti-clockwise on the left corner and clockwise in the right corner. And it seems that uh, the rotation crosses the hey domain here and the rotation originates from, uh, from the obtuse corners here and here. And if we extract uh, a profile of the rotation along this line, then we can see that the rotation increases step by step and in this region the rotation varies um, almost perfectly uh, linearly and we can measure it with um, a good sensitivity thanks to um, the dark field electron holography technique. So we have shown that we can evidence uh, strains and rotations induced by uh, substrate and stacking of the domains in a PZT thin film using um, transmission electron microscopy and this is important to understand uh, the piezoelectric and the flexoelectric properties of, of these materials. We are also working on uh, PMNPT materials and we try to apply a, a bias to the samples uh, inside the microscopes in order to um, observe directly uh, piezoelectric mechanisms. So I thank the NanoStrain project and the STEM2 network and thank you for your attention.